we're interviewing Gian Nortes, who's a filmmaker and a director, a writer, an actress, and we're talking about her hus my husband's wife, her film, and uh, we're ta talking more about her life, how she started as an immigrant, and also as a judge at the world's best. And so, hello. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Thank nice you nice for the introduction. Yes, <laughs> of course. And we are always impressed by your passion for filmmaking and doing it on your own. So tell me about the movie first and how you started. Well, this film is, uh, of course, that was um, a passion project. That was a project that uh, had taken a lot of my heart, my hard work, and uh, dedication. It wasn't a simple project because it was inspired um, by unfortunate events that takes take place in uh, Kazakhstan. But as we we spoke, you and I, a year mm -hmm. ago about that, it, it it turns out that that happens in many different places around the world, and that is what I call uh, political. Uh, sorry, economically forced polygamy, mm -hmm. where it it, it isn't religious background that pushes people into those type of relationships. It isn't um, ideology or anything like that, but it is strictly economical uh, foundation for this strange phenomenon. It's basically a way uh, for people to survive. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, it's a way for, for other people to capitalize on the other people's misery basically. Mm -hmm. Give us a little gist of the summary of this movie and uh, why you wanted to do it and spread the word. Sure. Um, basically the, the story unfolds around three lead characters, uh, a husband and a wife and a mistress, but she's not just a mistress, it's not your simple story. She becomes so-called the other wife or additional wife, the one in our language we actually have a specific terminology, tokal, for those type of um, relationships. And it's a story where we try to show um, the development of each characters in a way where it unfolds the reasoning behind what each one of them, you know, does. Mm -hmm. Uh, for for example, the husband who, at the beginning, naively thinks that he's in love with his mistress, uh, and then takes her in in the role as additional wife, and the society in which the uh, the uh, the actual legal wife is forced to actually sustain a relationship with her husband, knowing that he's got another family, literally. So she's pushed by the societal rules, by her own family, to stay in that kind of strange relationship. And then there's the young girl, who also at the beginning of the movie, completely convinced that she loves this man. But as the story unfolds, each one of them opens up in a completely different way. Uh, the youngest girl um, did not stick around when hardship comes for the man. Mm -hmm. um, the man is pushed away and he is having to survive in a completely different situation where he is stripped away from his power. Mm -hmm. And the, the legal wife who tried so hard to adapt, uh, she also tried to uh, rebel against it. At the end, she chooses herself. She chooses her children and herself, and she she basically. Obviously, th th there's a lot of understanding on her side that she's gonna go through things, and she's no longer uh, in so-called family. Uh, mm -hmm. But she she decides that she's enough. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it are men doing this? This is a very common story also in the Philippines. Like the story sounds like a Philippine setting too, or a Philippine yeah. story. So why do you think it happens in society? 
I think, honestly, that a lot of the times when a person acquired a certain amount of wealth, uh, uh, obviously not for everyone, but there is a lot of those who, as they acquire a lot of wealth, they kind of adopt this mentality of um, um, collecting things, collecting Rolex watches, mm -hmm. collecting expensive mm -hmm. cars, and then once all of that is not enough, mm -hmm. they start collecting relationships. But of course, those are not not deep ones because you can't you can't have deep relationships with you know mm -hmm. many many people. But it, it's not it's not what bothers them. So I, I really think at the bottom line is uh, greed mm -hmm. and um, a feeling of power and mm -hmm. and um, acquiring. Mm -hmm. Never stop doing that, mm -hmm. and never stop to think for a second. Is that something that I, uh, that's important to me? I don't, I don't think these people um, develop uh, vertically. They don't, I don't meaning I don't think they care that much about the depth, mm -hmm. as much as about horizontal development. Mm -hmm. Where like you know, I just want to have more mm -hmm. of whatever it is that they want. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of also a personal story for you with the experience of one of your relatives or something? Can you talk um, about that? Yes, unfortunately. The, the movie is dedicated to a memory of my beautiful cousin. Mm -hmm. she, um, she found herself uh, in that situation. She was a legal wife and uh, she was only 45 at the time. She was a beautiful mom of three. And um, Long story short, she tried to save the family, but she couldn't survive the situation. I will not be mm -hmm. disclosing how she passed mm -hmm. away, but she passed away really quickly. Mm -hmm. And with this movie, what do you intend for the audiences, especially the women and probably the men too, will get from, from your movie? You know, the, the intention was, you know how in the film, when, when you address an important subject matter, there's a couple of major ways of doing that. You either basically put a mirror in front of people and say, take a look at yourself, take a look at what's going on, you know, and then try to look at yourself in the morning in the mirror and see if you're gonna feel good about yourself. So that was the approach that I take. And of course, there are, there's another one uh, where it's more of a, uh, this is how you want to be where like you 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 show by example this movie will actually kind of have a little bit of both mostly it's a mirror effect mm -hmm. and I've seen that on audience people walking out of the the theaters uh, were crying and uh, some of the, the I've been approached actually during the premiere by um, uh, not one but many people but one of them I remember very vividly it was a man um, probably mid forties, and he was crying, and he said, oh, "Thank you so much for this movie. I will, I will never behave this way anymore." So it was very clear that that's what he's got. Mm -hmm. But I really hope that the important message of the film is like it, uh, the kids, the children are to me as a filmmaker mm -hmm. the most important element of the movie. Because we adults oftentimes don't understand, but but what is what is it that we do and how it affects our children? I mean, the movie only it ends; uh, it doesn't show what happens later. Mm -hmm. But in my in my head, the oldest daughter will have all kinds of psychological issues, and I don't know. The young one most likely be less affected because she was a lot younger. But the older one who actually went through this, she uh, 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 faced the betrayal of, uh, you know, her father, mm -hmm. and uh, this whole situation and uh, desperation of her mother. And, um, I don't know. We have to really stop and think about it for mm -hmm. a second. And how was the reception in your country and in other countries? I know this movie has traveled to sev several film festivals. Yeah. So how was the reception that you got? Um, the ones that I was able to visit, as far as the festivals, mm -hmm. the reception was very, um, 
outside of Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. It was it was really uh, great actually. A lot of people would stay for Q and A. Most of them would ask me a lot of questions. And um, in New York, for example, the Q and A lasted for almost an hour. Mm. Yeah, uh, people asked a lot of questions and. Um, um, so is in Bologna. <laughs> it was very interesting, and um, you 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 were in the screening during the Golden Globes. Yes, yes. And you saw that people asked a lot yeah. of questions, yes. and um, mm -hmm. that that was very um, to me that was very touching because mm -hmm. I really didn't want to pour light on the subject matter mm -hmm. because it it oftentimes gets overlooked. Mm -hmm. In Kazakhstan, the reception was very strange. Mm. In what way? Um, I would say good half of the audience would get up and leave before the Q&A with like hatred in their faces. I guess that those are the people that recognize themselves most mm -hmm. likely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to see that or face the truth. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They don't, they don't want to, you know, label things for mm -hmm. as long as you can keep your eyes closed. It's all okay kind of thing. And the other half would get up and give me applause mm -hmm. and stay and ask questions and, um, you know, um, notice that it, there is a bravery aspect to put it, like making a movie like that and putting mm -hmm. it on screens too. I know you're a female, you're a director, an actress. How, how did you manage to do all that? And you're a mother? <laughs> um, I did not plan to direct this one, mm -hmm. um, so I, I did obviously produce it, mm -hmm. and uh, I was really looking into maybe hiring an actress to play the role mm -hmm. instead of myself, because it would have been a lot easier for me uh, to handle all of that. I did not expect to wear so many hats, <laughs> really. Um, but what happened was is that a friend of mine who actually directed that, and he's um, a wonderful person from Russia, uh, he lives in Moscow, when we were on the set, I saw that there were aspects of our cultural aspects that were very difficult for a foreign person to understand and directed in the way where the actors would respond emotionally. So I had to jump. <laughs> I had to jump in and save the situation, so and then shoulder to shoulder we did it together. Wow. Mm -hmm. And how many days did it take for the filming and everything? It takes years. Like, it, it, real pride, it took 16 days to shoot the movie. Wow. 16 days. Yeah. And you finished it. And how long is the movie again? Uh, it's uh, an hour and 40 minutes. Wow. Do you do also the editing? <laughs> No, I, I have uh, I have a group of people mm -hmm. uh, in my company that mm -hmm. um, does the editing, of course, mm -hmm. and no, not just editing, but mm -hmm. like the entire post production. Mm -hmm. You took up music in college, but now you're doing filmmaking. How did you become a filmmaker? How did you decide on focusing on filmmaking? Mm, good question. Um, so I was in music since I was five years old and, and then um, eventually I got my master's degree in music science, S uh, graduated from Kazakh National Conservatory. But when I was 14 years old, my wonderful father and I had this conversation because I told him, Dad, I no longer want to play violin. I just don't want to do this anymore. And I remember we were sitting for probably three hours or so. Mm -hmm. And he asked me, what is it that you want to do? <laughs> and I said, um, filmmaking. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it came from, mm -hmm. but I kind of grew up reading a lot of um, legends and fairy tales and history of our people, which is so rich and so beautiful. And um, not many people know about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think maybe that impacted mm -hmm. my, you know, my vision of what is it that I want to do with my life. Um, but I couldn't actually do that uh, not until later when I moved here. And that's why I moved here specifically to become a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. what, 
wasn't it scary for a single mom with two kids and then going to Los Angeles, a place that you don't know from Kazakhstan, and then I say, I want to be a filmmaker, and now you're very successful at it. <laughs> I mean, how did you do that? Like, what was the uh, guiding light or the inspiration for that? Oh, my goodness. I remember the feeling. The feeling was, I'll say that visually, I just remember feeling that there was a strong wind pushing into my back where like I couldn't turn around, I couldn't go anywhere else, but I had to do what I had to do. That was also fueled by a fear. And the fear was that someday I'll wake up late in my life thinking, oh my goodness, maybe I could have done that, but never gave myself a chance. Mm -hmm. And that fear of regretting something also fueled that decision. But you're right, it was really scary because I showed up here with my two little kids at the time and I literally knew no one in town. Mm -hmm. Nobody, I knew not a single soul. And um, I remember driving this rental car and thinking, so where should I rent an apartment? And <laughs> where do my kids go to school? And all these basic things. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I need to work on my English because my English is not good enough. <laughs> and all these things and uh, starting the credit history. And mm -hmm. you know, we all go through that. You, you went through that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's amazing how successful you are right now. And nobody was actually helping you and you're doing it all by yourself. So where did that come from? Where did that drive come from? My parents. Mm -hmm. My parents were like that. They were very um, dedicated to their career kind of people, both of them. Uh, they were both in science. Mm -hmm. My mother was a mathematician mm -hmm. who's written books and she had lots of different degrees mm -hmm. in science. And my father who had every kind of degree <laughs> in, um, you know, uh, in science as well. And he, he, uh, he was an oil man and he has written, um, I, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 13 textbooks mm -hmm. that people still study mm -hmm. by his, uh, the books that he's written. Some of them are right there. Mm -hmm. And, um, um, you know, he's made more than 150 innovations in his industry. And uh, they just, um, I, I guess, by example, I just watched them never stop. They kept going, they kept going. I remember the conversations where my father would look at my mom and be like, don't you think it's it's time to like do something like a little bit higher in the level, <laughs> like write another book or something? <laughs> you know, and uh, my mom would be like making soup for the kids and uh, because she had three kids, mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. uh, me included. And at the same time, I remember the table would be filled with her books and like all this paperwork, mm -hmm. her, yes, scientific work that she did. Um, I guess that that kind of, you know, mm -hmm. uh, made an impression on me. Do you have any, are, are siblings who are like you? My brothers? I'd like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all in Kazakhstan? Or? Yes, my two brothers are in Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, with your movie, now it's being seen all over the world. So, and it, you mentioned also it's in Amazon. Yes, it's on Amazon Prime, it's uh, in uh, uh, the UK, and it's in uh, North America, it's mm -hmm. also in Mongolia, and the movie uh, is also on major streaming platform in uh, the CIS territory. Mm -hmm. And what's next for you? Are doing another movie? Yes, uh, another, that's just a quick producing project. Mm -hmm. It's an action film. Um, the working title is Mongolian Connection, mm -hmm. uh, but um, uh, for the, the the Central Asian territory, we're going to change the title. Mm -hmm. um, so that is an action film, mm -hmm. and it's a commercial project. Mm -hmm. And uh, but that also does address uh, some important subject matters, which is the human trafficking. Mm -hmm. And you also have your own company. You mentioned uh, your company. Uh, you're into producing and. Uh, production. And I have a couple of companies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of companies. <laughs> Just yeah. for uh, And I'm very curious now how you ended up as a judge 
at the world's best of James Corden, which is very popular now. It's going up the roof. And with Faith Hill, RuPaul, and Drew Barrymore. How yeah. did you get that gig? Oh my, uh, you know, I, I received the phone call um, on my honorary council of Kazakhstan uh, number. And uh, that was about the, the world's best, but they were looking, um, they didn't say what it is about, but they were saying that we're, you know, CBS, we're calling uh, to find um, a translator from Kazakh language. And I'm like, translator from Kazakh language? There's hardly any Kazakh people here. Very few. Yeah. Um, and I said, sure, I can help you. But, um, and then they're like, but we're also looking for an expert for our show. I'm like, what kind of expertise? And they start listing that, and I'm like, well, I think you're looking for me. <laughs> and um, so um, obviously, producers had a meeting with me, and uh, we talked about different things, and um, I was hired in the spot. Wow. Mm -hmm. So how was the experience? How was the first day with the group? Uh, how, what was your reaction to the judges, the mm -hmm. main judges? Well, it was a, honestly, very, very emotional um, experience because it's a competition. Mm -hmm. Competition, you can't help it, but you get emotionally involved with talent. In, and there are your favorites, although you can't say that, but you root for talents, for certain mm -hmm. talents and you get heartbroken when something happens to them and they don't get on the next level. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll get to that, I'm sure you'll ask <laughs> yeah. about that. Uh, but the best thing that ever happened to all of us, the, the 50 judges, is that we found each other. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. We get together literally every week. W mm -hmm. We talk and we have a group chat on WhatsApp. <laughs> we completely involved with each other's lives and mm -hmm. successes and so on and so forth. And uh, some of us already travel to see each other <laughs> in different continents. It's, it's incredible. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I know, of course, you know my friend Pops Fernandez oh, is there. Her. Yeah. So how did you bond with her, get to know her? Oh my God, when TNT boys were cut out yes. of the competition mm -hmm. and then Dimash and Danelia Dimash left mm -hmm. and Daniela was cut out. She and I gave each other a huge hug mm -hmm. and we basically wiped each other's tears. Mm -hmm. It was really hard on both of us mm -hmm. because teen teen boys are so talented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so was Dimash and Daniela. And um, I, I mean, there were a lot of favorites for each one of us, mm -hmm. but I, I could, I could say that those three, those three acts, those three, you know, well, I'd say acts because mm -hmm. TNT is three boys <laughs> plus the two Kazakh singers, they were probably the, the biggest talents, mm -hmm. at least to me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, the, 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 I, I know that for a fact that most of us, the judges, loved, loved those acts. Mm -hmm. And I remember we were sitting and we're like, who's next, TNT boys? Oh, yes, it's gonna be so fun. <laughs> oh, we couldn't wait to hear what they would come and sing and sing with Dimash, it blew yeah. everyone's mind with his incredible talent. Mm -hmm. When he quit the show, that was, that was hard. That was really hard for me. And so, um, what's up for you now? You're a judge and uh, you have a film coming up again. What are the other future projects coming up? Oh, you know us producers who always have. <laughs> Are you writing several, another script? Several things. I'm writing a couple of treatments. I never write a script, by ah, the way. Okay. I usually write a treatment, a synopsis, and then mm. we hire writers. We okay. pick, an op mm. pick a writer to write a script professionally. Obviously, mm -hmm. as a producer, I would watch the process very closely. Mm -hmm. But there is one that you probably would be very interested in. Because I know I, 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 I'm getting to know you, but we, mm -hmm. this is not the first time I see mm -hmm. you, and I know you really um, root for for justice mm -hmm. and you root for women, mm -hmm. and this is actually addressing the Me Too movement. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, I would wanted to ask you to with the upcoming Me Too movement and uh, Times Up. You know, do you feel that women directors are getting now more their breaks and more women are gonna get more chances here in Hollywood? I really do think so. Uh, what really does worry me is um, I got nothing to do with this. It, it, what worries me is that we independent producers are in a like a lot harder spot now with the mergers of Disney and Fox and, mm -hmm. uh, and like other major mergers mm -hmm. and the world's becoming like filled with these incredible giants and we having to compete with them. Mm -hmm. Where like they already um, basically uh, own, I, I forget the number, but it's, it's uh, like 65% of all content in theaters. Mm -hmm. That's Disney alone, mm -hmm. you know, so we just have to mobilize ourselves and become even more creative, mm -hmm. even, you know, more organized and understand that it's not an easy time. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's when the real good stuff will come out. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, looking back, I, do you feel like you're in a good place right now? Is Gia Nortas in a good place right now? Gia Nortas is in a good place. Um, th there's, I was laughing with a friend of mine, and it's uh, we were shooting a podcast, and he's on on the show as well. But it, uh, 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 but it feels like in our profession, we are constantly, perpetually in the first step. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. each project is a first step. Each project presents us. They're like own unique set of challenges. So you always feel like you keep learning, you keep making this first step. Mm -hmm. But I guess you have to embrace that, mm -hmm. integrate it mm -hmm. into your life and, and enjoy it. So it's being a producer, you better enjoy a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you were to tell your younger self what to expect or what to do, what would you say? Wow. I never thought about it, Janet. This is a <laughs> great question. <laughs> ah, what would I tell myself? Your young self. Besides uh, invest into Bitcoin and, <laughs> 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 and uh, other things. Um, just keep going. Mm -hmm. uh, one step at a time. Never stop believing. Breathe, meditate, meditate more. Um, yeah. And important thing, you are enough. You can really do it. Because sometimes it's a it's a huge fear. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get so scared. It will are right, mm -hmm. and it's very very human. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, it's very important to remind yourself, mm -hmm. you are enough. You can really do it. Thank you very much. You're an inspiration to all the women. Thank you so much, Dana. Thank you very Thank much you. for your time.